Hello everyone and welcome back to the spectacular Spider-Man Season 3 and the final episode of the season, episode 13. If you have enjoyed this series, leave a like and tell me in the comment section down below what your favourite episode was. Thank you for sticking around on every episode and I appreciate you all so, so much. Make sure to subscribe because Season 4 is coming very shortly after this season ends. But without further ado, let's do this. Episode 13, Responsibility. We start our episode and Peter is upstairs asleep. It's a Saturday, so no school today. Peter gets to sleep in today until Aunt May knocks on the door saying Peter's name. It's 1pm in the afternoon. Peter jolts out of bed saying he's coming. Peter comes downstairs and asks about breakfast. Aunt May laughs saying that he missed breakfast ages ago. Peter's eyes widen. The black circles underneath them could be seen clearly. He was exhausted. With everything happening around him, Peter found it hard to sleep. And even when he did, he'd just dream of the same face over and over again, the goblin. Whether it was purple and green or yellow and orange, it would always be him. It always was him. Peter was determined to find the truth. Aunt May then reminds him that they're catching a movie with MJ and Anna Watson today. Peter forgot, as May says, that they're leaving in 15 minutes, which is why she woke him up. Peter scrambles to get ready. We cut to a scene with Wilson Fisk as he's been loaded off at Riker's Island, back from seasons one and two, where all the supervillains would be held. Fisk accepts that this is his fate. He lost. His empire is gone. He has to regain his power by establishing himself as the top dog throughout Riker's first, if he is to return to the top once again. We then cut on to later in the episode when Peter is out with May, Anna Watson, and Mary Jane. They all catch a movie together, and it is relatively normal. I want to use this time, which would probably be a good three to five minutes of the episode, exploring how well MJ and Peter work together. We've never really seen them interact apart from in school or with other people around. This will take time to explore how good their chemistry is together and how well they will get along. For a moment, Peter will forget everything instead of constantly thinking about Fisk, the Goblin, Harry. He will just be Peter Parker, something that he hasn't been able to do for such a long time. This will be the feeling that only Gwen has ever given him before, the ability to forget. We also see it in MJ's eyes as well. That's something that she was holding on to in the last episodes. Those hints that there was a little something more to her character evaporates when she's with Peter, when she's spending time with the boy next door. Peter allows her to become who she really wants to be. She's almost a different person to the cool and perfect girl we have come accustomed to. Once the movie is up, Peter and the rest of them will make their way outside, when Peter sees helicopters flying above him. This can't be good. Instantly, he snaps back into reality. Spider-Man is needed, and he's needed quickly. Whatever it is, it can't be good. Peter says that he has enjoyed his time out, but he says he really needs to go, desperately. There is something that he needs to take care of. This takes MJ back a bit. It's becoming quite annoying as much as it is mysterious. So this time, whilst May and Anna go off into the markets as Peter leaves, MJ follows him and decides that she will find out for herself why Peter Parker is so mysterious. Peter is getting changed into a Spider-Man costume in an alleyway, and MJ sees this from afar. She doesn't reveal herself, though, as she stays hidden. But to her surprise, Peter Parker is Spider-Man. As he slips down his mask and webs wings away, MJ couldn't believe it. But it sort of made so much sense to her. Peter Parker is Spider-Man. She will think this over in her head, over and over again. That annoyed feeling within her would subside to sympathy and almost sadness as she realizes what Peter puts himself through every time someone is in danger. His selflessness comes across as selfishness, but he can't tell anyone that. As to not panic May, as to not panic her, or any of his friends because Peter has a responsibility as Spider-Man. She sees that now. As MJ contemplates what she has just seen, Spider-Man swings away heroically as he follows the helicopters. Something inside Peter tells him that this is the goblin. Hob or green, this is the end of it all. The helicopters start to travel over to the prison island, Rikers, as Peter watches on. Explosions can be seen off in the distance. Peter thwips a web towards one of the helicopters as he attaches himself to it. He crawls along the side to see Captain Stacy was also aboard the same helicopter. He hops in and talks to the captain. Stacy briefs Peter into what is happening, and the all units are to converge on Riker's island. It's major. The Hobgoblin is attacking the prison, and all the supervillains are escaping. Peter gulps. He'd only ever dealt with the Sinister Six before, but all of his villains at once, that was something else. We cut to Rikers as Hobgoblin attacks. We soon learn that the Hobgoblin is still going after Wilson Fisk, no matter what. Apparently, him being in prison wasn't enough for him. He wants him dead. 
Spider-Man makes his way onto the scene. I imagine this battle taking up a majority of the episode. It will be legendary, with most of his villains over the three seasons returning to battle him in some capacity. The police force and even the military will be put out in action trying to help Spider-Man defeat all the villains. He'll come across Rhino, Montana, Puma, Craven, and many more. He fights his way through them as he tries to make his way to the Hobgoblin as he is looking for Fisk. Once he reaches him, Spider-Man will ask why is he doing this, and the Hobgoblin will say that he wants Fisk dead, because he is the type of man that if you don't kill him, he will keep coming back and back again. He needs to die for the great of good, not just for him, but for Spider-Man too. Peter starts to listen. The Hobgoblin goes on to talk about the fact that Fisk will make his life a living hell, because soon he will be out of this place and back ruling New York. That's just the type of person he is, and it's only a matter of time. Spider-Man says that killing is never the answer, no matter what, because with great power also comes great responsibility, and that's an oath that Spider-Man has always lived by. Spider-Man and the Hobgoblin clash, not just physically, but morally too, as they engage in battle. Pumpkin bombs flying everywhere. This is Spider-Man's greatest fight yet. His suit, torn and ripped from the season gone by, representing his mental state slowly disintegrating. But he must fight on, because no matter what, he always has to get back up again. The battle rages on, until Spider-Man finally defeats him and all the other villains. The police start to regain control of the prison again. But one last thing, Spider-Man must find out who the Hobgoblin is. He pulls his mask off to reveal none other than Donald Menken underneath. It turns out that after his kidnapping by Fisk from earlier in the season, Menken had decided that enough was enough and Fisk was to die. Without Oscorp, without his job, he was a nobody, so decided he was going to take back what was rightfully his. He would stop at nothing until Fisk was dead. He found an undercover prototype suit of the Goblin and decided to use it as his own and spray paint it in his own colours. He also decided to use some prototype tech that he also had access to, since he once worked at Oscorp. And thus, the Hobgoblin was born, and went on to fail. Peter was surprised as anyone. He fully expected Harry, or even an undead Norman Osborn, to be under the mask. But no, it was Menken. After this, Captain Stacy will arrive on the scene. Peter will fall to his knees. He's absolutely exhausted. But the battle is won. The battle is over. Captain Stacy reminds Peter that he can see his face. As his mask is torn more than ever, he says he needs to get out of here, but he says thank you. He couldn't have done any of this without him. Peter nods and swings away, leaving the police to arrest Menken. And in a gracious and relentless final battle, the goblin is gone forever. We cut to a week later. Everything is going smoothly. Peter looks a bit happier, but MJ looks on as he traverses the hallways at Midtown. She knows his secret and looks rather empathetic about it. Later that night, Peter is chilling in his room, relaxed. He hadn't felt this way in a long, long time. His phone rings. He picks it up. It's Gwen. She says that Harry is going to Europe to recover. Apparently, his mother is sending him away. After all the abuse and all the stress put through Harry Osborne this season, he's finally going away to recover. Peter is confused, though. What about the goblin charges? Gwen says that she doesn't know either, but apparently all his charges have been dropped for an unknown reason. They don't know why. Peter says that's confusing. The call goes silent though for a second after the conversation dips. Peter says, does that mean that they can finally be together? And Gwen says, yeah, she thinks they can. Peter smiles as he says he'll be over soon, but there's just one more stop he needs to make first. We cut to the hospital. Peter visits Emma Edwards, who was caught in the crossfire of the Hobgoblin and Fisk battle at the docks. As Peter arrives, the doctors tell him something very upsetting and very unfortunate. Emma has entered a coma, and there's nothing they can really do about it. Her parents are flying over from California to see her. Peter accepts this, but internally grieves, as he knows it's partially his fault to what happened to her. He can't believe it. Further proving what knowing Peter's secret can do to people, Peter speaks to her. He says that her knowing his identity kind of helps him. He can be honest, but seeing what happened to her, he wouldn't want to happen to anyone else. No one else can know he's Spider-Man. Never. He speaks to her, telling her that his Uncle Ben always taught him about great responsibility, and he feels a great deal of it standing there. Feeling down, knowing that Emma's future may not exist, he leaves for Gwen's house. We get a montage of Peter making his way over there. He buys flowers on the way with some of the remaining money he has left from the bugle. We can see it in Peter's face, though, that he's unsure, thinking to himself over and over again, 
about what he just saw with Emma. Peter makes it to Gwen's house and all the lights are on. He notices through the window Gwen and Captain Stacy laughing with each other as they talk about their days. Peter's eyes widen. He never even realized it's George Stacy. Captain Stacy. The same Captain Stacy that knows his identity. He can't let George see him here. Not after he knows that he's Spider-Man. He never even considered that. Peter starts to overthink. He can't let what happened to Emma happen to Gwen either. Emma got caught in the crossfire because she knew who Peter was. His identity will always be a big part of who he is. And if Gwen was too close to him, the same thing could happen to her. A tear rolls down Peter's cheek as he knows he's right. Once again, the responsibility of Spider-Man interferes with the happiness of Peter Parker. Peter bends down and leaves the flowers on the front porch. At this point, another tear rolls down his cheek again. Peter steps away and leaves. He knows it's not right. The best thing for Gwen is for her to be safe. And with Captain Stacy knowing his identity, it's already dangerous enough. He can't lose Gwen. He could never lose Gwen. Which means he can't be with her. Not as Peter Parker. Not as Spider-Man. And thus, we conclude our story. But wait, there is more. One last scene to finish off the season. Donald Menken has a visitor in prison. A man who goes by the name of Gabrielle Lyman. He has blonde hair and a bright blonde mustache to go along with it. He wore glasses to cover his eyes that carried much baggage. He sat down opposite Menken in a visiting room. Menken confused at who this man is. The man says to him that Menken will take all the fall for all of the goblins' crimes, including the Green Goblins too. Menken says, excuse me? And then the man repeats himself saying that he will take the fall for all of the Goblin's crimes, in a very threatening manner. Menken says, who even is he? And the Goblin was Harry Osborn, it has nothing to do with him. And then Gabrielle holds up a picture of Menken's family, stating that it does now. Menken gulps, and reluctantly has to agree. And thus his confession means that all the charges against Harry Osborn are dropped, letting him free. Menken says that he won't get away with this, and the man says, oh, but he will. Not only will he get away with it, but he won't even get an apology out of him. Because there's one thing, Gabrielle Lyman never apologizes. That is it for Spectacular Spider-Man Season 3. If you did enjoy the season, make sure to hit that like button and make sure to subscribe for Season 4 because it's going to be coming very, very soon. I'm currently in the process of writing it. It will probably start coming out next month or so whilst I get most of the episodes down and written so they can come out weekly. But with that being said, subscribe, like the video, make sure to share it around, tell me what you think will happen in Season 4, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Take care, and peace.